Welcome to Inspired Vinyasa. My name is Sandra. We are starting on our feet uh, for this session. So come on up if you're already comfortably seated. Sorry to bother you. And let's take the feet about hip distance apart so we feel completely supported by the earth. And then inhale, take the arms up. And I just want you to elongate right here, reach. You might reach through the right arm first and then the left. We're just stretching it out. Sorry, I can't get my my hands and all of my arms into this camera angle, but we work with the, uh, the room we have, right? And then just bring the arms back down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale them down. Just starting to warm up the breath. Inhale the arms. Bring the palms together this time and exhale the hands to the heart in prayer pose. Let the head gently drop and close your eyes. Here, pause to set a fabulous intention for your practice. Positive words only. And when you're done, go ahead and release the arms. Keep your eyes closed. We're going to set up mountain pose. So step the feet in a little closer to each other. They don't have to be touching or super close. If you feel like with your eyes closed, you're going to lose your balance, especially if you're on carpet. Now take your focus to the soles of the feet. Notice, are you wobbling in all directions? Do you seem to be leaning more toward one and you're continually counterbalancing? Which way is it that you're leaning? Are you totally steady? Are you grounded? So the wobbling is normal. We're going to attempt to take our focus to the four corners of each foot and then root down. So let the feet Feel like they're pushing down through the mat. We're not locking the knees. This is all about the feet right now. And then imagine that you're drawing the earth's energy up through the legs. So as you draw that up through the ankles and then into the calves, past the knees and into the thighs, I want you to feel this lengthening occurring, a growing, if you will. We're talking about growing today, growing plants, but I'll take it in any tangent I can that makes sense. You know that. And then let that energy come into the hips. Draw that earth energy up through the spine. Find your length. And then all the way to the crown of the head. So you feel about as tall as you can get. Take the shoulders up toward the ears. And then back and down. So you'll notice when you do that, the hands naturally rotate slightly forward. I want you to leave them like that. And then if your eyes open, close them again. I want you to notice, does your skull, your jaw, your head, feel like it's leaning forward, pushing out over the front of the body? I want you to pull the head back slightly so it's in line. Now start to deepen the breath. Feel the support, the earth. I want you to visualize sending your roots down through the soles of the feet into the ground so that even though we might have a little bit of wobble or sway going on, we don't feel like we're going to fall over. We feel like something is there energetically to support us on our path. Take a deep inhale. Cleansing exhale. And then remembering how this mountain pose feels right here, Tadasana. We'll come back to it, of course, but I want you to realign it each time we come here without us talking our way through it. So go ahead and widen out the feet again, just a little wider than hip distance. Inhale the arms. Bring the palms together and release them to the heart. And then pushing the hips forward, kind of locking them into place, can you take just an upper body twist to the right? So it's kind of like the right elbow is guiding you. Notice my hips have not followed, just 
the arms, the right shoulder pulling back. You might choose to let your head turn to look over that shoulder. On your exhale, come back to center. Only the upper body moving. Inhale here. Ah, exhale, take it to the other side. Left elbow is guiding you. Good job. On an exhale, returning forward. This time, inhale. Exhale, take your twist to the right, but let the hips go with you. Now be careful about twisting into that left knee. If you need to bend that knee, you absolutely should. In fact, I kind of like how that feels, so I'm going to bend mine. Exhale, come to center. Inhale here. Exhale to the left. Go ahead, bend into that right knee if you did on the first side. And then returning forward, release the arms. Inhale, just the left arm up. Exhale, side bend to the right. That right hand's just sliding down the leg. You can push that left hip out to the side if you want to. Keep that top shoulder open. And then come back up. Switch the arms. Exhale to the left. So one of our new seems like a family hobby here, which I think could be very common for many families lately, is getting into some gardening and planting. Come on back up, release the arm. And I say that it might be popular for a lot of people because when I went to Menards to buy potting soil, completely out. So I'm guessing it's not just us. Go ahead and lighten out that stance a little farther. Let's take the toes wider than the heels and just sit down in the goddess pose. Rest your hands on your thighs. We're just hanging out right here, ah, focusing on the breath. And so some of the things that we have accumulated on the deck are different types of vegetables, probably your basics, you know, tomato plants. Go ahead, rock this out a little bit. Uh, peppers, squash, strawberries, that kind of thing. And then, of course, we're attracted by the pretty things. And so purple salvia, lavender plants. Um, should have looked at the name of this one, but it's really cool. It's like red, feathery. It looks like salvia, but much more feathery. It's very cool. Anyway, just kind of accumulating different plants that catch our eye. Okay, to sink this down, it's the root chakra that's pulling you down. My hips are not out behind me. Straight down, straight back, breathe. <sighs> breathe, I know. This is getting a little tiring. <sighs> oh, okay, come on up. Ooh, keep the legs where they are. Just let them breathe. <sighs> the analogy I want to make with the accumulation of pretty flowers and plants, some of them useful, some of them more eye-catching, some of them both, right? The lavender plant is pretty and it's useful. I want to caution you against collecting yoga poses. Come on back down. Turn your fingers in, drop the right shoulder, sit down into this pose, inhale, come up, Switch the shoulder, exhale it down. Keep going. So we've talked about this before, this idea of collecting poses, of feeling like there is a pose checklist and that you must get through them all. And if you've been following my classes on YouTube, you may have seen a pattern where I'm not doing a lot of poses, uh, challenging ones in particular, because I can't see you. And it is my primary job to keep everyone as safe as I can since I cannot see you, especially those new to yoga or completely new to a challenging pose. And so this idea of collecting poses, especially uh, virtually, doesn't make any sense. Go ahead, straighten the legs, close your eyes. Three deep breaths. Ah. 
And then opening the eyes, wiggle the feet in back together. Cross the right foot in front of the left. And then come on down into a fold. So even if we weren't virtual, in a classroom setting, collecting poses does not make sense. I get the attraction to seeing a certain pose perhaps in a magazine and you're like, well, that's a pretty pose. I would like to learn how to do that. That would take a great picture. And then there are other poses you see and it's the challenge that sucks you in like, okay, that one could take some work, but maybe I could get there. I'd like you to think beyond the pretty and challenging poses to the fact that all poses have something in common, all of them. They all have an entry, a transition, if you will, to get to them. They all implore you to find stillness. And then there's a transition out. And so focusing on those transitions is more important to me then getting into the actual pose. I want you to see if you can lift up a little bit to monkey. Or if you have your balance, get your hands on the shin, lengthen up the spine. And then let's come back down. Bend into the knees a little so you can get that right foot next to the left one again. And then reverse swan dive. Hands to the heart. Cross that left foot in front of the right. When you're ready, come on down, Uttanasana, forward fold. So even in forward fold, it's a lot harder, I know, with our legs crossed, we can't get as low as we normally might. However, if you think about this, somebody who comes into a fold and perhaps can only get maybe halfway down, right? Back is close to parallel to the earth. And then somebody who can come about 45 degrees, and then someone who can go all the way down. I want you to consider that the outline of the pose is the same. We are all doing the same thing, essentially. Just looks a little bit different. And there are different variations, of course, of poses. Which one's right? Is there a right? I hope you've already said no. Go ahead, take this to monkey. So paying attention to every little adjustment your body's making. Like I can feel myself catching my balance, you know? That's normal, but usually we don't pay attention to that. Sometimes we allow the mind to go, okay, I wonder what pose she's gonna do next. Don't worry about that. And then release back down. Let's replant the feet next to each other. Reverse swan dive, come all the way back up. Hands to the heart. Fabulous. So I'm going to move to one end of my mat. Go ahead and inhale. Take your arms up. Exhale all the way down. Forward fold. Uttanasana. When you're ready, inhale monkey. Arla Uttanasana. Come on back down. Bend into the knees. Let's take one leg back and then the other. Chaturanga. Find cobra. Let's hang on to this pose for a moment. Move around, let's loosen up. Ah, oh, when you're ready and you find an exhale, come on back down. I'm gonna take the right forearm in front of me across the mat, left hand's reaching back to grab that left foot and gently draw it in. If this is an issue for your back, come all the way down to the floor so that the low back isn't being challenged. So, most likely, each of us has seen a pose before where we thought, oh yeah, I wanna learn that. I think that's normal. It's the attachment. It's the attachment to a checklist of poses that becomes maladaptive. Um, Go ahead, release that leg, switch to the other side. When we get hung up on doing certain poses for the sake of doing them, 
or because they look cool or they look challenging, I want you to consider that what is actually happening is ego is stepping in. So we all have an ego. We talk about ego a lot in yoga because our primary goal is to separate from the ego. But let's think about what ego actually means or translates to. Go ahead and release that leg. Plant the hands, push all the way back into Balasana, child's pose. So I think usually when we, were the, when we use the word ego, the connotations are negative. Like, oh, you're calling me, you know, ego-centered, uh, you know, or, or um, kind of means it's all about me. And in a way that's true, the word ego does define the meanness or the I-ness of ourselves, but we are not our ego. There's something more, right? When the ego steps forward onto the yoga mat, you'll know. How will you know? There are little cues that ego gives you to say, I am with you in your yoga practice. Come on up into the table. What are those cues? Well, find cat cow here for a moment while I chat your ears off. One of those cues would be, if you have a thought pop into your head about, Wow, this would feel a lot better on my body if I were using a block. But then you choose not to use the block. Why is that? Well, that's because the ego is saying something to you like, um, what, you can't do it without the props? Other people can do that pose without the props. Why do you need it, right? It's intuition. It's our our um, inner self that says, grab the prop, you know? Things shouldn't be painful in yoga. They, sh they don't have to be super difficult. That's what the props are for, right? Go ahead, come back to a neutral spine. Take this to downward facing dog. Walk it out here. You also know if the ego has popped in, if you're having thoughts like, um, uh, well, I don't think I can hold this any longer, but everybody else is, so I'm gonna have to stay here and just bite my tongue. No, that's the ego telling you you have to stay there. Your body's already told you it wants to come out of that pose, right? Okay, let's plant the feet. Really push the hands forward so we can get the hips up. Three deep breaths. And then I'm gonna take that right foot, sweep it forward. I'm planting that foot. Get your balance on the back foot. We're coming up into a high lunge. And then sink the hips down. In fact, let's make this more comfortable. Interlace the fingers, take them behind the head. Tip the head back just a little as though you're just stargazing. Piece of cake right here. So what I'm trying to say is ego is not necessarily bad. It's our attachment to what the ego is saying that is detrimental in a yoga practice. You don't have to do any of the poses, frankly, right? If you were just to hang out with me right now and be in Shavasana the whole time, God bless you. Big inhale, exhale. Hands to the earth, step on back. Let's find a vinyasa right here. Chaturanga, cobra, down dog. Left foot stepping forward, find your high lunge. Sink it down, interlace the hands, take them behind the head. Happy place. Breathing, good job. Release the hands to the earth. Step back to plank, same thing, vinyasa.
Ah, once you get to dog, take three deep breaths. Make that third exhale super loud. And then let's walk the feet forward halfway, cross an ankle over the other so you can sit down and stretch the legs out in front of you. Ah, perfect. All right. Staff pose, Dandasana. Close your eyes. Go ahead and drop the head forward. Slide the hands back about six inches. Fingers are facing you. Lean into the hands so the palms come all the way to the earth. Slight bend in the elbows. Inhale, lift the heart and head tips back. Now deepen the breath here. And then bringing the head back to center. I want to do reverse plank, but I want to show you a modified version first. So let's do both. So go ahead and bend the right knee, plant the right foot um, just to the inside of that left knee, point through the left ankle, inhale the left heel, right foot and hands, push the ground away so the hips can rise. So a modified reverse plank. One more breath here. Good job, exhale, slowly come down. Um, one other little trick, if this is too much on the wrists, having them bent like that, take your mat behind you, roll it up. I thought that would be easier when I said it. And then if I get the very heel of my hand on the edge of that, that mat, my wrist can't go to 90 degrees anymore. There's a little bit of relief there. So just a little tidbit for the day. Okay, send out the right leg, left knee's bent, point through the left ankle. When you're ready, inhale, lift. Wait for an exhale to come back down. And then let's do a full reverse plank. Both legs, point through both ankles. If this, if you like, you already know this pose isn't right for you, stay right here. Yeah? Okay. If it's the ego telling you, you have to come up because I said so. Mm, no, that's the attachment we were talking about. Inhale, lift. Remember, I can't even see you. If you're in Shavasana, I love it. Breathe. Can you get the soles of the feet to touch the ground? On an exhale, release the hips, flex the feet, sit up tall, inhale the arms, exhale into your fold. Now, close your eyes in your fold. The ego likes to pop into forward fold. I'm telling you this. If there's any conversation going on in your head about you're not low enough, uh, why do you have to have your knees bent? How long are we holding this stupid pose? Um, so that's ego stepping in because you don't have to hold the pose. We talk about that a lot. You come out of a pose when you need to. Yes, your knees can be bent in a forward fold. Um, it's compassionate. And does it matter how low you get in your fold? Absolutely not. And frankly, I bet you've noticed this too, but some days your fold might come down to your legs and other days your body's saying no I need a break and so it just might be a peaceful angle forward right and that's all good and fair all right come on back up ah go ahead plant your hands behind you however it makes you happy Extend through that left leg, push the left leg down towards the earth, lift the right leg up. This shouldn't be too bad with our 
upper body weight supported by the hands. Breathe. Rotate that right ankle. And then bring that leg back down. Switch. Rotate the ankle. Good job. Exhale that leg down. Oops. Bring the upper body perpendicular to the floor. Plant the hands. It's going to be a little harder. All right. And inhale. Lift the right leg. Breathe. Draw the right knee in towards you. Go ahead and reach forward. You can round through the back here to grab the bottom of that foot and then extend. Yeah. So if you need to add some movement here, go ahead. If you got there and the right hip isn't happy or something just doesn't feel right, come out of the pose, reset, and you know, see if going back into it makes it better. Straight back here. Couple more breaths. Let's see if we can get this leg in just a little bit more. Good job. And then let's go ahead and help this foot come back down. I'm going to keep the right knee bent. Right hand behind, left in front. Inhale your length. Exhale, twist to the right. And remember, we're always waiting for an exhale to unravel or sit back up, rise out of a pose. So go ahead, wait for your exhale to release that twist. Sit up nice and tall, lift that left leg when you're ready. And then pull the knee in toward you, reach forward, grab the bottom of that foot. See where that leg wants to go. If you need to move and, you know, make some of the muscles a little happier first, go ahead. Straight back. Deepen the breath. And then let's see if we can get that leg in just a little bit more. As I release this foot, it's coming down inside of the right knee so I can set up for my twist, right? Left hand behind. Inhale, find your length. Exhale, go ahead and make that twist to the left. Deep breath in. Exhale. Release the twist. I want to bend both feet. Get them to the width of the mat. Toes a little wider than the heels. I'm using my hands to push myself up here into malasana. So elbows are tucked just inside the knees. I'm pushing my knees open. Hands at the heart. My straight spine. A ah, couple of deep breaths. Don't stay in this pose if it's not right for you. Especially if the heels don't touch and you're balancing, you can come out at any time. Okay, hands to the earth. Start to straighten the legs, wiggling them back in towards each other, Uttanasana. Inhale, monkey. Exhale it down. Find chair, bend into the knees, sweep the arms up, sit it down. Ah, perfect, hands to the heart. Uttanasana, step back to plank, Chaturanga, Bhujangasana, Cobra, I'll meet you in dog, float the right leg up, three-legged dog, oops, I'm really close to my door, step that right foot forward between the hands, 
plant that back foot, warrior B. Reverse warrior, right arm up. Extended side angle. Stay with a strong breath, purposefully strong. <sighs> okay, that weight that you have on the front leg, back it off. Go ahead and straighten out the front leg without locking the knee. My leg is not holding all my weight. Deepen that breath. <sighs> Warrior B. Virabhadrasana. Cartwheel the hands back down. Pivot on the back foot. Three-legged dog again with the right leg up. Oh, good job. Set that leg down. Inhale, plank. Chaturanga. Cobra. Downward facing. Left leg up, three-legged dog. That foot stepping forward between the hands, warrior B. Reverse warrior. Extended side angle. Remember, alleviate some of the weight, pushing down on that front leg. And then slowly straighten out that leg. Don't lock the knee, keep it soft. Good job. Warrior B. Cartwheel the hands to the earth. Step on back. Take a vinyasa right here. Ah, deep breath in. Loud exhale. Maybe you just close your eyes here for a moment and down dog. And then slowly drop the knees wide, push back. And do Balasana and close your eyes. So let's think about a yoga pose that we really don't like. See, I can't hear you. You don't even have to tell me what it is and then I trick you into doing it. Just picture the one that you don't like. And then will you cut attachments to that pose? Why, why do you have to do it? You can't do a pose just because everybody else is doing it, right? And if you get called out for that, you're in the wrong class. Practice is yours, only yours, own that. Couple of more deep breaths here in child's pose. Oh, relax and letting it all go. Perfect. And then go ahead and walk the hands back in. Bring the knees in towards each other. I'm going to lean forward, take my hands out in front of me. I'm still sitting back on my heels. And then I'm going to turn the left hand counterclockwise. So fingers out to the left and then all the way around to face me. Yeah, you should feel that right here in the tendons of the forearm. So you can play around with that stretch. If it's too much, lift the hips up, right? You feel that lesson? If it's not enough, push further back. Breathe. It should be just right. Now, focusing on where you feel this in the left hand, as we release the hand and let it turn back forward, I really want you focusing on that transition. So close your eyes. Make this a very slow movement. As you feel your fingers lifting up, notice that. Gently unravel the wrist, feel the sensations. Plant the hand back down, keeping your eyes closed, just noticing how the left wrist might feel different from the right. 
you know, and if you hear the right wrist saying, oh, I could do that better, I could do that longer, um, that's ego. I wouldn't want the right hand participate then, just stay right here. Work that out of your head. We don't need attachment. Okay. But if you're ready and you feel like the right hand can be balanced, go ahead and turn it so that the fingers face you. And then go ahead and just find that place in this stretch where you need to be. Couple of deep breaths. Good job. Close your eyes. Slowly release that hand. Pay attention to the sensations. And then come on down into embryo. What I'm hoping you noticed is to focus on the small sensations takes a lot of your attention, right? I mean, you really have to, you have to commit to that focus. And in doing so, we're in a time to dwell on, huh, can't do handstand, I can't do headstand, whatever it is, right? We let go of all that because we're so focused on the beautiful little elements of the poses we can do. And so, you know, if you do feel like your practice has been a collection, <laughs> collect plants instead, but you're going to have to order your soil online. That I am certain of. Go ahead, reach the arms forward. We're coming up onto the knees, so table. And then I'm going to walk my arms forward. We're looking for half dog here. Um, either the forehead to the mat or if your neck can handle it, bring the chin down. And then let's slowly make our way back to table. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. We're picking up the pace again. I think I gotta walk away from that door. Right leg up, three-legged. Step the foot forward, warrior B. Reverse warrior. Extended side angle. Adjust your weight, straighten out that front leg. Breathe. Warrior B. Now hold it right here. I want you to drop that front arm just inside of that knee. I've actually got the back of the hand inside that leg. And then let's take the left arm up and then let the arms move in opposite directions. Hold it right here, breathe. My right leg and right arm are gently but actively pushing against each other. Deepen the breath. Good job. Okay, let's slide that hand all the way to the ground or to a prop, right? If that makes it easier. It doesn't have to be a yoga prop, it can be anything. <sighs> can you take your gaze upwards? Spread the fingers wide, palms facing in the same direction you're looking, kind of, if you weren't looking upwards. Ah, <sighs> nice. Take that top arm, reach it overhead. So imagine my hands are on your top hip and I'm pulling your hip away from you toward your feet. Can you lengthen that out a little bit more? Nice job. Slowly bend further into that front leg, warrior B. I like that front leg bent to come back up. It's just safer. Cartwheel the hands to the earth, pivot on that back foot, Step back to plank. Chaturanga. Take it through your vinyasa. I'll meet you in dog. When you're ready, left leg up. 
Step it through. Warrior B. Reverse warrior. Extended side angle. Slowly straighten out that front leg. Keep breathing. Come back to warrior B. Drop the left hand, the back of the left hand, to the inside of that left knee. Ah, take the right arm up, and then let's just lean a bit to the left, leg and arm active. We're gonna slide all the way down. Top arm reaching, lengthen the hip away from you. Let the top arm reach overhead. Warrior B. Cartwheel it down. Step back to plank. Go ahead, take your vinyasa. When you get to dumb dog, three deep breaths. And then holding dog, close your eyes. You know, when your ego pops in to tell you that you could do something harder than what you're doing, yeah, you probably could. You absolutely could. But I need you to question why. Think about that. That's where you get one of those cues. Is it ego answering the question or is my inner self yet, you know, saying yes? Let's, let's do a little bit more. All right, come on down into child's pose. When we get to child's pose, I'm going to take a huge inhale and a super loud sigh. And then rise back up into table. I'm going to go ahead and take the left leg, stretch it out behind me yet, open the hip so I can turn and rest the inner edge of that back foot on the ground. And then as I look down, my right hand is not in front of my right knee. I'm going to slide it over so I'm more centered. Now slowly open this up. It's a supported side plank. It's going to feel wobbly because of where we have the right leg. If you need to pivot that foot out behind you for support, go ahead and do so. Breathe. So let's make this option A. And I'm gonna give you option B, but of course don't do it if you don't want to. If it's ego saying, yes, you should do that, you already know the answer, right? So the back foot and the supporting hand have got to work together here to push into the earth. I want to get this bottom leg off the ground and just send it out in front of me. <sighs> okay, now as I come down, I'm rotating. So I'm gonna rotate on the back heel first, the left heel, slowly lower my hips down. I should be able to easily turn toward that left leg. You're gonna be facing in the opposite direction. So I have my right leg off 45 degrees. My left leg is running parallel or vertical with my yoga mat. I can face my left leg, and then I want to sit up really tall and just take a fold ah, right over that left leg. So that little twist we took, well, I don't know if it looked pretty or not, but it was useful. That was our transition to coming back down to the safety and the support of the ground. So my question is, because that was kind of a, maybe a new transition or it was kind of different or weird, 
we might not have thought about it. You know, you heard me say what to do. We kicked the leg out and we just trusted and we sat down and whew, hopefully we ended up facing the left leg. And when we get to the other side, I want you to really think about the transition. Feel it in all parts of the body. Notice whatever you need to notice about it. All right, let's go ahead and come back up. <clears throat> so I'm facing the opposite direction on my mat. It's okay, just listen. Come back to table. We'll get turned around again. It's all, it's all gonna work out, I promise. Now go ahead and send the right leg out behind you. Fall onto the inner edge of that foot. When you're ready, open the right arm up. And here, you know, even in finding the stillness in the pose, you might have already noticed, is this side more or less wobbly than the other side? Just things to consider, right? Ah, breathe. Okay, again, this is option A. You don't have to take option B, but if you stay in option A, you are gonna have to figure out how to get yourself back down, right? So push into the outer edge of that back foot, send the left leg out in front of you. Happy place, you're smiling. Now, as I lower, I've got a pivot on the right heel, slowly bend into my arm to come back down. My upper body can naturally turn be facing that right leg, kind of in my wall, so I'm scooching a little bit here, and then go ahead and take a fold right over the right leg. So which transition was better? The one you weren't thinking of and just doing it to figure it out, or, or the one where you Kind of just, I hope, appreciated how the body had to completely work together to get you turned around safely. All right, let's go ahead and come back up. I want to get this left leg back over here onto my mat. I'm going to um, bend the knees, take the heels um, about hip distance apart. Let's take the hands behind us, fingers facing in. I think this will be the last thing we do that's going to put pressure on the wrist because um, I don't have generally have wrist issues, but mine are getting tired from this, and so I can imagine anyone's wrist issues might be a little tired of all the uh, pressure on those poor, poor joints. So if you're suffering, stay right here. No suffering in yoga. Just stay right here and breathe. Otherwise, oh, let's lift on up into tabletop. <sighs> Breathing here. Is the spine a straight line? Neutral neck if you can which means you're looking straight up at the ceiling. If the neck can't do that, bring the chin in. Good job. Exhale, slowly come on down. I'm just bringing the hips down. Gonna stay tipped back into my arms for a moment. And then lean back, use your elbows. We're slowly, slow transition. I know you can come right down, but I want you to think about all this, yeah? Ah, releasing and then hugging the knees into the heart. Go ahead and just stay here, but turn your head so you're looking over your left shoulder. And slowly bring the head through center, turn. To look over the right shoulder. And then bring the head back to center. We're going to plant the feet, align for bridge. I'm hoping you can see. Yes, I think you can see all of me on the mat. I'm trying to stay super close to the wall. Get those shoulder blades underneath you. Draw the low back down. You'll feel the tilt of the hips, balls of the feet pushing into the ground, and then lift when you get to an inhale. Ah, <sighs> So this is option A. Option B, wiggle the shoulders underneath you so the hands can find yoga mudra.
Make sure that the knees are still facing up toward the ceiling, that they didn't flail open. Um, you could use your hands at your low back for support if you want to. This is going to add a little bit more arch. Breathe. And then we're going to slowly release the hands wherever they're at. Wiggle the shoulders out from underneath you first and then come back down. Uh, hug the knees back in. So I'm going to go ahead and straighten out the left leg. Part of this I'm probably going to just have to verbally talk you through because I for sure am going to run into the wall here and um, but that's okay. We'll make it. We've done this before. So I want to take the left hand on top of the right knee. It's going to pull this knee across in a supine twist. The right arm, I want it reaching down behind you, alongside your body. All right, maybe I might have room here. Option A, stay here. Option B, bend the bottom leg and see if the right hand can catch the left foot. So I'm actually using both hands to kind of pull my legs in opposite direction. Left hand is gently pulling my right knee down. My right hand is kind of like, um, you know, in Gomukasana, cow face legs, it's kind of pulling the foot towards my right. So imagine that you're sending the front knee and the back foot in opposite direction. I think that was an easier way to say it. Ah, breathe. As always, if you got here and it's too much of a twist, back doesn't like it, that's not ego. That's your physical body telling you you need to pay attention. That's a hemsa. So go ahead and make adjustments. Deep inhale. Hold the breath. Okay, big exhale. Uh, and let go with both hands. Slowly straighten out the body. Stretch out the legs on the mat as you realign the hips and just close your eyes. Perfect. Okay. I don't know about you. I don't even feel like moving. Go ahead and hug that left knee in. I know we need to stay balanced. Right hand on the left knee. Pull that leg across into a twist. Left arm is reaching down alongside your body behind you. Option A is right here. If this is enough, stay here. Option B, bend the bottom leg and see if the hand can catch the foot. And then again, it's this idea of extending the foot and the knee in opposite directions. I mean, they're both going down, but they're lengthening outwards too. All right, strong breath in and hold it. Loud exhale. Gently let go of both legs and unravel yourself back onto your back. Straighten out the hips. 
Ah, straighten out the legs, close your eyes. Feel any sensation that you feel. I mean, seriously, when you think about it, that's a challenging twist, but you certainly notice the transition coming out of it, right? It's as though the muscles are releasing and maybe applauding, but you notice it. And we just don't notice the other transitions as much, especially poses we're used to. All right, shift your focus to your breath. I want you to empty out the lungs completely. That means pull the stomach in, get rid of all the air, and then a slow, deep inhale to your count of eight. I want you to exhale to 10. Keep going. One more time, counting the breath, and then you'll let it go. And maybe you're already in the position to drift away into Shavasana. If not, this is your time to adjust Grab a pillow, a blanket, a sweatshirt, your socks, whatever it might be. And then just close your eyes. Feel the body letting go. The breath softening. And you just enjoy every second of Shavasana. I will come back and get you in a little while.
what is ego? He says, it is like your shadow. The moment you have a physical body, you have a shadow. The shadow itself is neither good nor bad. And so how does this idea of attachment factor in? If we're attached to our shadow, then my vision I'm seeing is somebody who's constantly having to be out in the sunlight to have a shadow. And when the sun isn't there, that person becomes extremely upset or sad because the shadow has disappeared. The person is suffering or sad because of the attachment. I hope that makes sense. Take a deep breath in. Let it go. Bring some life back into the hands and the feet and any other part of the body that wants to move. And then you can stay right where you are if you're happy or if you prefer, go ahead and roll to a side in a fetal position. And then very peacefully make your way back up into your favorite seated pose. Strong inhale through the nose. Loud exhale. Inhale the arms up. Bring the palms together and release them gently back home to your heart in prayer pose. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.